Hi, I'm Heather Lefebvre and I've just written a book called The History of Christmas. I live here in Indianapolis with my husband and five children and we love history, we love books, we love learning about things, we love Christmas, and we especially love the Lord Jesus. I've written this book because I want people to be able to understand just how it is that Christmas came to be what it is today, how it's developed over time and in various cultures. I want kids to understand what it felt like, what it tasted like, what it smelled like, what it sounded like, at Christmas time over the ages. It's my hope that in reading this book that you will come to understand just how it is that we have the Christmas we do today. So why the history of Christmas? You know, when I was a child, I overheard a comment by an adult that some of our traditions at Christmas are stem from pagan traditions. And that got me curious, thinking, what parts of Christmas come from where and what times? And how come I didn't already know all this? As a parent, I wanted my children to know all the facts. I wanted them to know the history of Christmas, the church history behind it. I wanted them to understand different cultures, where different practices came from, and how the church gave new meaning to practices that were already happening in their own cultures. So I decided to put together this history of Christmas to help children understand what it was like to be in these different times and cultures, to eat those foods that those cultures were eating, to smell those smells, to see what they see, to hear what they heard, and hopefully to give my children and others around me an idea of how we came to where we are today with Christmas and how we can best use our own traditions nowadays to point to Christ and to allow his joy to fill our hearts at this time of the year. I think understanding the history of Christmas and understanding history in general helps us to have a better perspective on our own times. And I think children want to know where things came from, how things work, how we got to be where we are today. And giving them this knowledge can really help them to understand how to live today. And I think helping children to understand that Christ has been in the business of not only transforming and renewing our lives, but our cultures as well, over the space of 2,000 years, can give them hope and understanding that he's still doing that today and that he can do that in their lives as well. So what part of the history of Christmas is most interesting to me? That's a hard one because I find it all very interesting. Of course, I personally am drawn to a lot of the Victorian Christmas traditions like the Christmas pudding and making your own presents and decorating the house with greens and red berries. But each part of the Christmas story has actually been very interesting to me at different parts of my life. Um, as a older teenager, I wrote a report on John Chrysostom, the golden mouth preacher who appears in chapter two. Uh, as a young teenager, I was infatuated with St. Francis of Assisi and his desire to give up all he had to serve other people. Uh, I was also very intrigued with Catherine von Bora, who became the wife of Martin Luther and spent many years sort of using her as a, as a fictional mentor. Um, then later on I, in my twenties, I spent year after year studying the English civil war. That's the time when Christmas wasn't celebrated by many and Catholics were under persecution. It's all about priest holes and undercover and secrets. And today, recently I I've enjoyed studying Charles Dickens and the Victorian Christmas and my family has a connection with Oklahoma, and I spent a lot of time as a child reading about the American West, and I can easily picture what Christmas was like in the late 1800s there. So each part of the Christmas story actually is very interesting to me. I think my favorite chapter is the Christmas Cancel chapter. I think it's because it's an unexpected plot twist in the story of how Christmas came to be. Who could imagine Christmas actually being illegal to celebrate? And I love thinking about that and the circumstances surrounding it and what people were thinking at that time and how they were gonna move forward with this celebration. So I think that's what is my favorite. Without a doubt, the candy cane cookies are my favorite recipe in the book. 
A friend made these for me many, many years ago, and ever since she did, I have been smitten with them. I think it's because candy canes have been a personal symbol of Christmas for me since I was about six years old and started getting my mom to buy them for me so I could decorate my room. As a child in December, I think oh, getting up every morning to open the advent calendars is one of my favorite memories. You would think I was getting a present every morning for how fast I jumped out of bed and ran to the windows where they were taped just to see what was behind each window. And we used them over and over again every year, but I didn't get bored. And even as an adult, I'm still excited to watch my children do the same. My family enjoys a lot of Christmas traditions these days. I think some of our favorites are getting a live tree, decorating cookies together and giving them to family and friends, sending Christmas cards. I love sending Christmas cards and I can never make myself give up on that. I've loved doing that since I was a child, writing to people far and near and staying in touch with them. Um, I think as an adult, I especially love sitting around the Christmas dinner table with family and friends and soaking up the, the magic of that, that moment together. As a child, my favorite part of the Christmas story was a part about the kings, the magi from the east visiting Christ. I think I was enamored with this whole drama of important men, maybe in fancy clothes, bringing wealthy gifts, and I was intrigued by all of that. Also, We Three Kings was one of my favorite carols, and I would get my sisters to sing it with me. Since I had two sisters, there were three of us, and we could each sing one of the verses for one of the kings. As an adult, I think my favorite part of the Christmas story is Mary's response to the angel when he tells her what is going to happen. She says, I'm the servant of the Lord. May it be to me as you have said. And her response of humility and trust in the Lord is something that I think is the response every Christian should have before the Lord. And it takes great humility and reliance on Christ to have that. I hope that children who read this book will gain a greater understanding of how Christmas came to be, of how Christ was born for them in a stable a long time ago, how that's come to us through time and history, how the celebration has grown and changed and been transformed, and how Christ is at work in Christmas today. I want children to have a better sense of the presence of Christ in their own celebration and how he's at work transforming and renewing their own lives and filling their hearts with joy so that they can share his love with other people.